Hello learners, this is Dr. Amit Ahuja from University School of Education, Guru Gobind Singh Indra Prastha University, Delhi. Today we are going to deliberate upon scientific method, method or a way of interacting with the things in a scientific manner or scientifically. First of all, it becomes imperative on our part to dwell what is science, what is the nature of science. Science is a literature of knowledge that is collected through experimentation and observation. These two basic notions, experimentation and observation, differentiate sciences from rest of the another field of knowledge like social sciences, languages and mathematics. Now, another question arises, what is experimentation and what is observation? Doing the things can be differentiated or can be categorized, classified into three major domains like experiment, practical and activity. Experiment are conducted when a person moves from known to unknown state. For example, to determine the, or to, to identify the cation and anion present in a salt to determine the strength of the given more salt solution can be categorized under experiments because the uh, experimenter or the person is in a known state but he she has to move to an unknown state that is to determine to find out. Practicals are conducted when the person or the doer moves from known to unknown. For example, prove that length of a conductor is directly proportional to its resistance but its area is inversely proportional to its resistance. Now you see we have been given the things, we have to just verify this. So under those situations practicals are conducted. Activity means a sequence of acts, but that sequence of acts is meaningfully organized. Generally these are conducted for primary level, middle level, etc. So this way of exploring the knowledge it finds an important place in the domain of sciences. But everything cannot be experimented, cannot be conducted through practical, cannot be subjected to activities, so things can be observed. For example, to verify certain facts in nature like fall of leaf etc. are subjected to observation. Observation is best carried out by using our five senses but eyes predominantly carry out this process. So, it is better to define this uh, word observation in a simple manner that is careful seeing. It is not merely seeing, it is careful seeing. So, that we can deduce or arrive at a conclusion. These two things experimentation and observation characterize science as sciences. Then scientific method is a methodology. It is a way of doing the things as I said earlier also but in a scientific manner. The chosen methodology in sciences depends upon the objectives of the lesson, needs of the learner and nature of the content under consideration. For example, if I am dealing with the concept of resistance, current, volt, etc. for a uh, middle level child, then I need not to go further in terms of its classification, the series arrangement, parallel arrangement, etc. But for uh, dealing with a senior secondary child or secondary level child, it becomes imperative that I must qualify, classify this. So, this is the nature of the content that also determines what type of methodology is to be used. In the present discussion, we will confine ourselves to scientific method only. It is a method that pertains to discovery learning, that the learner is provided some information and he she has to work upon that he she is, does not know what is the end, what is going to take place, he she has to explore and hence it necessitates the encouragement of laboratory experiments and innovative demonstrations in an exclusive manner. The person or the child has to do a number of experiments to arrive at the conclusion. And in fact, in a broad term, it sets a platform for authentic investigation whose solution is not available in textbooks. For example, if I say water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, that is verified, then it cannot be subjected to scientific method. 
But what happens to the boiling temperature of the water when certain substances are dissolved in it that may be soluble in or insoluble? Let us see. So, such things can be subjected to scientific method that what happens to the boiling temperature of water when soluble substances are there or when insoluble substances are there. Is there any variation? Let us see. So, such situations can be subjected to scientific method that is learner is not in an known state. And basically it is a problem solving method. Problem solving method as per Gagne's hierarchy of learning is the highest form of learning. Because if an individual is able to solve a problem then we assume complete learning on his or part has taken place. So, this is scientific method is one of the finest method to come across to know whether my learner has been able to solve the problem or not. Now, let us define scientific method. Scientific method is a logical and systematic study of a problem. You see the basic words are logic and systematization that is we are not haphazards. Logical means there is a one and one only definite way of arriving at the conclusion and there is one and only one solution. There is no alternate so that requires precision on our part. I give an example of logic also for example, aluminum which is a metal its atomic mass is 27 and atomic number is uh, 13. So, how many number of neutrons are there? I know that atomic mass is equal to number of proton plus neutron that is 27 and atomic number is the number of proton that is 13. But in an electrically neutral atom number of proton is equal to number of electrons. So, if I am able to come to know how many number of electrons are there I can deduce. But I am clearly given the number of protons that is 13. So, mathematically speaking 27 minus 13 gives me 14 that is the number of neutrons in that. So, that is the logic that I have used that is proton plus neutron minus proton. So, proton minus proton get cancelled I am left with neutron this is the logic. Now, I ask you a simple question is there any other way or methodology or formula to arrive at this digit? No, because this is logic. Systematic means we are organized, we are sequential in our nature in performing our experiment or the task under consideration that is step by step 1, 2, 3 and so on, but not random. So, scientific method focuses on logic that there is one and only one way of finding the solution and it is systematic. Now, what is a problem? Learner, problem means anything that disturbs an individual is problem. For example, 2 plus 2 is equal to question mark. Maybe problem for a nursery or a primary child, it is ok. But if it is a problem for a senior secondary student, then it is not a problem, then it is a blunder. That perturbating factor is disturbance. Disturbance in a positive way, that is cognitive disequilibrium takes place and the learner is motivated to solve that problem. As discussed, let us summarize that one also logic one and only one route to solve a problem is there a systematic means step by step and organize sequentially. Now, steps of problem uh, scientific method problem. First of all, what does a learner desire to learn? What is the intention of that learner? Is there any motivation level for that? Yes or no? We need to gauge that. So, there is a problem in that. Another aspect after problemming is hypothesis. Hypothesis means an intelligent guess. For example, if I see clouds then based on my experience I can say ok it may rain today. So, it is an intelligent guess. So, based upon the collected facts is the learner able to deduce something intelligently in a in the form of a guess that is hypothesis. Look at the spellings H Y P O T H E S I S it is in singular form, but in plural form it is S E S hypothesis when there is more than one hypothesis. Hypothesis give direction to the work under consideration. Then it is experiment. As I have explained earlier the difference between experiment practical and activity in scientific method we conduct experiment that is learner is an unknown state that he she has to arrive at an unknown state. So, to get that unknown state as known one experiments are conducted that involves testing of hypothesis. 
and that involves data collection, analysis of data and interpretation of data. Testing of hypothesis is not so easy to carry out as it seems it may take too much time. So, depending upon the type of the data collected and the means of data uh, means used for data collection may affect the results also. So, be cautious while conducting this. Conclusion, the last part of this method is what do the results indicate, what I am infer, what I am able to infer, what I am able to get, are the results compatible, yes or no. So, depending upon this, we reject the hypothesis or accept the hypothesis that prior to the conduct of a for an experiment, hypothesis were framed but the results show that result that results are in conformity with the hypothesis. So, accept this or not. So, hypothesis are a kind of rules and you can assume that experiment is a game. So, rules are framed first and then game is played and then we arrive at the result that according to these much rules game was played and this is the winner or this is the loser. So, same thing is applicable here that hypothesis were formulated, experiments were conducted and we arrive at this conclusion that hypothesis are accepted or rejected. Third thing is hypothesis need modification also, yes we may modify that also because we were not aware of the results and if we were aware of the results then there is no need to conduct an experiment for this. The scientific method has certain merits in compared to in comparison to other methodologies in question like the learners learn to formulate and structure the problem. The biggest problem in learning is to frame a problem. We can retrieve the answer, we can generate a solution by our hard work, by this method, by hit and trial method and our memory, our past experience, etc. But formulation of a problem requires the greatest cognitive exercise on our part. So, first of all children learn to formulate and structure the problem, this is a big cognitive exercise. Second, the learners undergo learning under the guidance of the teacher, yes they are the performer, but their is also, supervisor is also there. So, they have supervised freedom freedom in the sense that they can conduct the experiment, organize the experiment and so on. But there is supervisor also for safety purpose also and to uh, and to be economic with respect to time and energy efforts also because we have time bound curriculum also which has definite input and outputs. The another merit of uh, scientific method that is in question is the learners become well versed, well acquainted in collecting varied pieces of information pertaining to the problem that is they are able to gauge that they are sensitized that the given piece of information pertains to the problem or not that is it is relevant for me or not. For example, if I need to find out the effect of soluble and insoluble substances on the boiling temperature of water, then I need not to consider about the another aspects of water, another properties of water like viscosity, its surface tension, etc. However, the concept like dielectric constant may be useful to me, so I may consider it or not. I may consider it, I found it useful, I may retain otherwise not. So, such kind of interaction exploration helps the learner to be an advantageous state. Scientific method develops skills to solve everyday problem, yes. The learning does not get confined within the four walls of the classroom, they it come across the school boundaries classroom also they begin to visualize sciences beyond their textbooks that is science in everyday life that is find that is science finds a universal value they see science everywhere so such broad vision enables them to be a lifelong learners so this is the biggest gift of a scientific method to any person Another advantage or merit of scientific method is that it helps in establishing a healthy relationship with the, their teachers, yes a good rapport with the teacher is developed. Teachers develop a concern for students also which is mandatory according to national curriculum framework 2005 also, so learning becomes joyful. Teacher is not an instructor, 
teacher is a supervisor who cares for his or students, directs them, shapes them and definitely in turn learns a lot. Because you see every year the nature characteristics of the learner worry. So, the teacher may himself come to know what happens with a type of uh, problem working through scientific method with this type of group or with another type of group. So, that also leads to enrichment of the knowledge on the part of teachers also. The learners get familiarized with surroundings that is around them, objects, their applications and relationships rather than having information only in a tidbits manners or in a compartmentalized way. That is they begin to think, see the things in a cohesive manner. Things become meaningful to them. They just have to interpret that and find its meaningfulness and utility. So, nothing stands meaningless for them, nothing stands for them to ignore, but they must be able to derive some educational value from the surroundings if they use scientific method and hence again I say they become a lifelong learner. But everything is not perfect on this earth so and scientific method is not an exception to this. There are some demerits also because there is too much emphasis on practical work. You see sciences are not exclusive to practical uh, to theory. There are theory, concept, laws, principles also, but you see we have to focus ourselves exclusively on practical work. So, this may deviate the focus of the students from the point of concern also. It is slow, it is time consuming and long. Definitely a child is an innocent one, he she is not an expert one, it may take time. So, certain things that are obvious may not come to an end within a given time framework or in a short time. As I have said earlier, we have time bound curriculum. But such a, a, a practice of scientific method, since it is slow, it is quite time consuming. So, it is a matter of uh, testing our patience also. All the students do not excel by this method. Yes, all uh, uh, things do not suit all. So, some student may be demoted from this also because they do not get results every time. They are not able to develop the setup for that also. So, they may be demotivated. And most of the teachers themselves are not trained to teach by this method, yes, because in pre-service teacher education, there is not so much exclusive teaching practices or any other tutorial or any other internship or any other practical mode that pertains to scientific method, because we conduct lesson plans only, we deliver lesson plans only, but those lesson plans must be based on use of certain type of methodology like scientific method or process approach etc. But we do not focus on them, we focus on lecture or lecture come demonstration method only. So, the when the teacher himself herself is not prepared through pre-service teacher education program then it is not uh, useful to talk about this. Even in in-service teacher education programs teachers are not taught through that way. They focus upon only on ref, um, seminar and conferences where a resource person that is mostly a senior uh, teacher in terms of designation comes as a resource person. So, even the teachers do not have such uh, expertise in that field. But you see there are very few demerits, but there are many merits. So, we cannot ignore scientific method. Scientific method is a method that works scientifically that is it has some definite way of doing the things. It does not work in an in, in an uh, disorganized way. It works in coherence and facilitates the learner to arrive the con at the conclusion in an economic way. Thank you.